All right, guys, let's have a look at 1551. Here we have two freight cars, uh, A and B, traveling uh, toward each other. Freight car is going at 20, freight car A is going at 20 k's an hour to the right, and B is going 10 k's an hour to the left. And what you notice here is that there is this spring, okay? Obviously, it's to help when they impact one another to reduce the impact, okay? All right, so now what is the question? The question is determine the maximum compression of the spring mounted on the car, on car A. Neglect rolling resistance. What is the maximum compression? Okay, so try this problem out on your own and then see how we solve this together. Okay. So you can pause the video, etc. All right, so the first thing you always need to do is you need to just ask yourself exactly what is happening. Um, so we can draw this over here. We've got this freight car there, and we've got a spring, and we've got freight car B moving that way, this freight car A moving that way, okay? Then at some point, there's the spring, they touch, but they're still moving toward each other. Okay? And now the spring begins to get engaged. And again, we've got, that's A, that's B. We've got A here. And the this, this spring gets completely compressed as much as it can. Maximum compression. And at this point, so, okay, let me just backtrack here. At this stage over here, let's call it state 1, they're still moving toward each other. There's a relative motion. Um, I'm not going to call this state 2, but at the next stage, um, even after the spring gets engaged and the spring is being compressed, A and B have different velocities. Okay? Does it make sense? But then at state 2, I'm going to call this state 2, at maximum compression, then there's no more relative motion between A and B, okay? Because the spring is no, is no longer being compressed. So at this point, both A and B have the same velocity, okay? So at both these initial stages, while, while they weren't touching and while the spring was being compressed, they had different velocities. But here, at this point, they have the same velocity because they are essentially one body, if you will. Okay? And so, these are the two stages. And this is at maximum compression. Max compression. And what we want is, we want the maximum compression. We want the S value. How much has the spring been compressed at maximum compression? Okay, so that's kind of what's happening. So what are we going to do? Well, in order to find S, my, uh, my initial or immediate response to that is to use conservation of energy, which is T1 plus V1 is equal to T2 plus V2. So what is the saying? We're saying the initial, let's even put a sum here, sum, sum, the sum of the kinetic energies of both particles plus the sum of the potential energy at state 1 is equal to the sum of the kinetic energy of both particles at state 2 plus the sum of the potential energy. Now, this is correct. It's 100% correct. But what you'll notice here is if you write this out, remember it's half mAVA squared plus half M A, sorry, half M B V B squared, okay, plus what's the potential energy in the system? Well, we're not looking at gravity, but there is a spring, but here at state one, at state one, it is uncompressed, so the potential energy due to the spring will be zero. Then we'll have half M A V A squared, I forgot to say this, at state, sorry, those brackets are wrong, I'm just going to rewrite this, half m a v a squared, let's call it at, 
at state 1, this is at state 1, and then this is at state 2, plus half mb vb squared at state 2. But then we've got complete compression of the spring, which means we have potential energy in the spring, and that is half ks squared. And we're looking for this s. That's where it comes from. We've got the k, we're looking for that s. But if you write this out and you fill in all the information, we've got ma at state, we've got ma and mb, we've got va and vb at state 1, but we do not have va and vb at state 2. So this is absolutely the correct um, equation or um, principle. But we, we have two unknowns in this equation. We don't know what the final velocity is, which is VA2, VB2, and we don't know what S is. Okay, so what we then do is, because um, we consider this as our system, and when, it, when they, the two uh, freight cars begin to interact, the forces between them are internal, the, in, the impulses will be internal, so, we have no external impulses, which means that momentum is conserved. So, we have MA VA plus MB VB. That's at state 1. Okay? State 1. And then what's happening at state 2? We have maximum compression and we have the same velocity for both freight cars. So, we're going to have MA plus MB times V2. Okay, because both of those cars will be traveling at the same velocity. Alright? So, we put this in. Let's see. This would be 30, so that's 30,000 kilograms for car A and 15,000 kilograms for car B. And if you convert the 20 into meters per second, you will get 5.56. And for this one, for 10 kilometers per second, you will get, sorry, 10 kilometers per hour, you'll get 2.78 meters per second. So you have to convert this into kilograms, and you're going to have to convert that into meters per second. So... Let's just insert some more white space here. Okay. So we're going to have 30, 10 to the 3, times 5.56. Okay. For this one, then we're going to have plus, let's see, it's 10 times 10 to the 3, 2.78. And then this will be 30 times 10 to the 3 plus 10, this is a 10, times 10 to the 3, right? And we have V2. And if you solve for V2, you will actually get 2.78 meters per second to the right. Okay? So what happens is that at maximum compression, they both start traveling to the right at a velocity of 2.78. But we're still not done. What we wanted to do was we wanted to use this equation to calculate our S, uh, but we didn't have the, this final velocity, VA2, VB2. And remember, VA2 equals VB2 equals V2, right? This is all the same. And if you plug all the values, you've got all the values, you've got the mass, you've got the masses, you've got velocities at 1, you, then now we've calculated the velocities at state 2. We've got K, which is 3 mega newton per meter. If you, if you plug all the information in, you will get S is equal to 0.481 meter, or 481 millimeters. Okay? Alright, hope you're picking up the ideas. Cheers.